This is my bathroom fan that's been installed for about 10 years I suppose. Um, it still works okay except that it doesn't run on when you turn the lights off or it doesn't always do so. So I thought I'd open it up and have a look inside see what's uh, what. Um, there's uh, a brown, uh, looks like a burn stain there doesn't it? I don't know what this A-shaped or V-shaped uh, bit of plastic is, but um, we'll have a look inside and see what's what. Well, there we see a high watt resistor. I can only read the first three bands. If the first three bands were correct, it would be 22K. But there seem to be two other bands that I can't actually see there. Hmm. That looks like the thing that's uh, not happy. The IC is an HCF 4001BE, which is a CMOS quad two input NOR gate. Um, I'm just wondering what actually switches the fan on and off. Presumably it's this possibly a transistor here? Triac? I don't know. We'll have to take this circuit out and uh, map it out. Well, I don't think I'm going to be able to read these bands. Because they're just going to come off, aren't they? Well, we'll take it out and uh, measure it. 23K. So it is a 22K resistor. Um, I don't know how many watts that is. 5 watts or something? Well, I took the two capacitors out and measured them. Neither of them are anywhere near what they say on the can. This is supposed to be 330 microfarads. It's actually 45 microfarads. The other one was similarly out. So we'll have to replace those anyway. Well, the fan looks okay, it just needs cleaning up a bit, perhaps lubricating a bit. And then this case is pretty filthy. We can clean that. I think there are two Xena diodes in here, but I can't actually read. Um, the type code. So I think there should be something less than 16 volts. So I'm just testing them. That's 14.6 volts, and this one is 14.7. Right. So those those little red ones are Xenas. Well, the way this works is that uh, the live comes in here and is connected to the fan. The neutral comes in here and is connected to the fan via a triac. The uh, mains voltage goes through this high wattage 22k resistor, is rectified by this diode and builds up a voltage on this capacitor here which is limited by this Zener diode to 14.7 volts. That's just the power supply for the rest of the electronics. Separately, we've got a switch live uh, signal that comes in here when we turn this switch on in the bathroom. And that is uh, rectified by this Zena diode here and also clipped to 14.7 volts. And it's applied to this two-input NOR gate, which is wired as an inverter. So that just inverts it, rectifies it through this diode and builds up a voltage on this 330 microfarad capacitor. When the voltage gets high enough, um, this inverter changes state from, uh, from uh, it's naught to start off with, so this will be 1 to start off with. This will, the inverter will change from 1 to naught. This is then amplified by two other inverters in parallel, so this goes from naught to 1, which applies a trigger signal to the triac. 
which turns the fan on. If we now remove this switch line signal, um, this inverter stops uh, injecting current through this diode, so this capacitor then discharges through this 270k resistor and 10 meg pot. And as the voltage falls on here, eventually it gets low enough so that the, this inverter goes from 0 to 1, this one goes from 1 to 0 and turns the triac off. So the time constant of this CR loop here determines how long the fan stays on um, after you have turned the bathroom light out. And the reason it wasn't working very well was because when I measured this, took this capacitor out and measured it, it was only about 40 microfarads when it's supposed to be 330. So that was the, real, the reason why the fan was not running on. Separately, this 22K resistor got seriously burnt. It still actually is working, but it, it's evidently underrated for its role. So I'm going to replace that with a higher... I don't know what the wattage of this one is, but I'm going to replace it with a 7 watt resistor, which will fit in the space there. And that will stop it uh, burning. Natural dissipation in this resistor, I reckon, is about 2.3 watts, so that should be a good safety margin. So I'm going to replace this capacitor, this capacitor, and this resistor, and the thing should then be perfectly functioning. Snag is, I don't actually have this resistor or this capacitor at the moment, so I had to order them. Well, I put it back together again with two new capacitors and a new 22K resistor. This one is 7 watts. Slightly too long, but I've uh, adjusted that. And also, I thought I'd put it up in the air, because the fact is, this resistor is dissipating about 1.2 watts all the time. And so it's going to get warm anyway. Uh, we just don't want it cooking the board. Uh, my problem is that I can't get it away from these capacitors just because it, it, it's got to fit in. It's got to fit in this um, space here. So when I fit it back in the unit, um, this tiresome, uh, which is the mains cable to the fan, which I've cleaned. Um, sticks out like this and is almost you know, virtually in contact with this resistor which is a bit of a nuisance um, and of course the resistor is really close to these capacitors if you want capacitors to last it's not a good idea to put them right next to a 1.2 watt electric heater right well I put it back together again and we're going to test it. What's a bit silly is there is a pot here which you can use to adjust the run-on time. But you can't actually adjust it whilst the circuit is in, in this box. It is uh, pretty ridiculous, isn't it? Anyway, so here's the switch live. I'll just uh, switch it on. Now, the, when we turn off the switch live, it should run on, so we'll see how long it takes. I think I'd better... avoid overloading the fan by... No, yeah, we're getting a... Well, that's working. While we're waiting, I'm keeping a careful watch on this loose wire here, which we don't want to touch anything else. Um, there was a famous railway accident in Britain where an electrician in a signal box had decommissioned a particular wire, and instead of cutting it off or insulating it, he just bent it about three inches out of the way. But that wire had been installed for many years, and over the weeks after it was deinstalled, the wire slowly moved back to its original position and short circuited something, gave a false signal reading, and there was a railway crash. So, the moral of that story is be careful of loose wires.
So it ran on for about seven minutes, which is absolutely fine. I'm not going to bother to tweak that pop, which I can't get at, to set a uh, different time. The problem with this design is that 1.2 watts is being dissipated continuously, ouch, in this resistor. And although it's now rated at 7 watts, so it's not going to go brown like the old one, it's just a waste of energy, plus we've got it in this tiny sealed plastic box right next to the two electrolytic capacitors that need to work. This is a first class pain. What I've done is I've made use of the fact that we've got a long wires on the resistor to pull it up a bit and get it a bit further away from those two capacitors. But it's still a bad design. So let's see how much current it draws. It should be about 10 milliamps. 5.6 milliamps. It's 5.6 milliamps. I expected it... Oh yes, that's right. So, um, well, no, it isn't. Oh, I'm surprised at that. 5.6 milliamps. Now it says 30 milliamps. I suppose one range is more accurate than the other. I expected it to be drawing 10 milliamps about. Put that back on there. Come on, make up your mind which it is. I prefer this reading because it's closer to what I think is happening in theory. Right, so it's a standing current of 9 milliamps, let's say. When we turn it on, um, so the motor only takes 100 milliamps, according to this. So the basic problem with this circuit is this power supply here which drops mains voltage via the high watt resistor and uh, establishes 14.7 volts across this capacitor. This has got to be able to supply the gate current of the triac, which is 14.7 divided by 1.5k, i.e. 10 milliamps. But that current is only required when the triac is on. When the fan is off, we don't need to supply any, all we need to do is supply the uh, HCF uh, 4001, which takes virtually no current. So we are wasting current, uh, wasting power all the time in this resistor, unnecessarily. I feel sure that there are lots of modern ICs that perform this function without uh, using this old-fashioned bespoke uh, device circuit. But um, and I've actually got two of these units one in my bathroom and one in my shower room. Um, I had a look in B&Q this morning and the exact same thing uh, made by the same manufacturer costs £41. So I've saved myself a bit of money by doing it myself, not counting the enormously uh, expense of my time. But the other one has also failed in the same way. And I'm inclined to think that what I will do when I take the other one apart is to replace the circuit entirely with something that doesn't waste all this energy. Well, I don't care about the one watt. What does that matter? What I do care about is cooking the capacitors so that they're bound to fail sooner or later. Well, I just wondered how hot this resistor gets. I've got a surface-sensitive... Type T thermocouple here. Uh, the temperature is shown there at the moment, 21.56. Right, I put a little heat sink compound on here. Let me plug it in again. And let me just remember that this thing is live. So I'm going to hold this here and we'll see what happens. 
after an infinite time. If I can manage to hold it still for an infinite time. See the curve is flattening off in a kind of exponential manner at the moment. 65 degrees C. So it's going to <laughs> stabilise something short of 70 degrees C, isn't it? Well, that's uh, nearly 68 degrees C now. It's almost stabilised. I'm not sure I can stand here forever. But we haven't even got the fan on yet, so... What I'm going to do is turn the fan on. I don't expect this to have any effect on the dissipation in this resistor. There we go. That's the fan on. Just unexpose the bottom end of it so that it's not overloaded. I'm getting a nice cooling breeze here, but uh, the resistor, of course, is not. Well, maybe it is getting a little bit. The temperature's going down a bit now. Of course, this does not tell us what the temperature would be if I put the lid on the box. Well, that's a slightly odd way to spend a couple of days after Christmas. But then you have to be pretty weird to uh, watch this channel anyway. I will get back to working on the Woodstock boat eventually. Um, I'm, at the moment I'm working on converting the back end of my garage into a proper workshop, which should help. Um, I can't promise any more videos on the Chinese mini lathe until I actually have some need to turn something on it. but. Uh, we should get back to the boat shortly um, when the festivities are over. And in the meantime, Happy New Year to everyone and thanks very much for watching.